Welcome yet to another beautiful day. Welcome to yet another beautiful day and a beautiful show here at HTV Africa, Humans TV Africa. And my name is Katum Kasa, and today in the studios is Dennis Bongole. In Uganda, I'm also a Ugandan, by the way, and very proud to be a Ugandan who shares information with you, who comes here on a daily on our HTV. Humanist TV Africa, and we share stuff with you. Now, I want to encourage you to please, please, please share our YouTube channel. It is Humanist TV Africa, but also share, like, comment. Also, visit our Facebook page, Humanist TV Africa, and see what we post. You can follow our daily shows at Humanist TV Africa. Please do us that favor as you help us, as we help you too by sharing information. Remember, we say we are here to share information. We are here to learn from you as you learn from us. Now, that's why you want feedback from you. That's why I want to hear from you. Your feedback is as important as what we communicate with you. Please give us feedback. Go into the feedback um, uh, section, give us your comments. And please, if you want us to interview you, if you want us to showcase your business, if you want us to showcase your projects, please contact us. Humanist TV Africa. Dennis is going to be displaying our email very shortly. You can be able to write to us. We give you business, you give us business. We shall give you coverage throughout Africa. Remember, Humanist TV Africa has studios in Uganda. We have up to three studios in Uganda. We have uh, a studio in Kenya. We are coming up with a second studio in Kenya this week. We shall be having a second studio in Kenya. And of course, we have a studio in Zimbabwe. We have a studio in Zambia. We have a studio in Ghana. And we intend to open up more studios throughout Africa. Now, join Human TV Africa and be part of the progressives. Be part of the people moving Africa forward, connecting Africa with the rest of the world. Remember, our target, among others, is to give Africa the right picture. I told you, I worked with the NGO Society, NGO World, for over 20 years, and I worked with international organization. My training is low. I'm a lawyer by training. But I've worked with international organizations, and I know that much of Africa has been depicted badly by people who work in NGOs. And remember, I confess, I worked in NGOs. Now, it's high time we highlight the mistakes NGOs do to market Africa. They market Africa as a poor continent. They market as Africa as a war-ravaged continent. They market as Africa as a dying continent with orphans, with so many bad things. Yet, in reality, there are many good things from Africa. Now, this TV is about to show you what Africa is doing well. This TV is about to show you our competitive advantage as people in Africa. Now, this is episode number three. Remember, I've done two episodes. I think then this is episode number four. You better check the archives because I saw that on the poster I put episode three, but I think this is episode four. I've been running this. I've been talking about Africa on this TV, and this is episode four, I think where I come and market Africa. I come and tell you what is our competitive advantage that we can use to empower people. Remember, Africa is special. Africa is the birthplace of humanity. Like it or not, it's about Africa. Human beings, the human species, the homo sapien, the way we are today, Caucasian, Blacks, Asians, whatever skin color you have, whatever skin pigmentation you have, all of us came from Africa, like it or not. The immigrations took place billions of years ago. Some put it about millions of years ago, about 4.5 billion years ago, the immigrations took place from Africa. Now, different species get out of Africa, and we are all Africans. Now, why do I talk about Africa? Because all of us come from Africa. I come from Uganda. 
from the equator, from the source of the Nile. And the Nile gave Kemet its civilization. So it means that my birthplace gave Kemet its civilization. And Kemet is the so-called ancient Egypt. But Kemet is Africa. Now, Africa has got an advantage. Africa trained the rest of the world. Africa civilized the world. Like it or not, it's dedication. They never tell you in school that we civilized the world. We took education in the world. We took the building system in the world. We took architecture in the world, to the world. That Africa basically played so much part in the civilization of the rest of the world. And they never teach this in school. They will never teach this in school. They don't teach this history in school. They want to teach you everything to do with, oh, they helped us, oh, they trained us, oh, they did this and that. They will never tell you what we did. Now, this TV will tell you what Africa did. It will tell you how Africa went wrong. It will tell you how Africa has been messed up today. And it will tell you what can we do to fix Africa. We start by knowing our history that was hidden from us, to know our great, 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 great ancestors. What did they do? Did you know that actually pyramids were built by Africans? Remember I told you Africans means all of us. Some people are thinking that Africa means black. That's being myopic. In fact, the name Africa was not us. The name Africa was given to us by a general called Africanus. It is an imperialistic name. It was not part of us. Africa is not our name. Go read. Africa is not our name, but you describe us as Africans. It is not our name. It was given to us by an imperialist. And all of you call us Africans. We are not. Basically, we shouldn't be. That's not our name. But we take it because now it's like we lack another name. And all these things people don't know that Africanus, an imperialist, gave us that name. Kemet was our name. Kemet was our name at one point. But also it was gotten from different histories. The etymology of Kemet is also different. Kemet, the word to mean a land of black soil. Now, Africa has got its history. Remember I told you that the pyramids were built by black pharaohs. Between 5,000 to 10,000 years ago, the pyramids were built by black pharaohs, not those Arabs in Egypt. Those Arabs in Egypt are liars. Please inform them. We know our history. They are lying. They never built a single pyramid. They found those pyramids there. And those pyramids were never built by slaves. They were built by black people who were being paid. But of course, black people of that time were also mixed black people because Africa and Asia, Africa and present day Europe were one. That's why people like Socrates, Plato, Aristotle went to Africa to learn at one point in life. So Africa has been a cosmopolitan place where every people went to learn a few things. When we say civilization began with us, we mean it. It began in Africa. When we say the greatest buildings began in Africa, we mean it. You look at the pyramids and show you how these guys could, con could construct. When we say architecture began in Africa, we mean it. When you say mathematics, writing began in Africa, we mean it. Because the history books are there to show you. The point is, I make, why don't we learn these things in our schools? Why do people want to portray an image that Africa is dying? That actually Africa has, that Africa has no history to talk about. Why don't we talk about Mansa Musa, the wealthiest man, arguably the wealthiest man on earth, with the wealthiest kingdom, call it an empire? The Songhai, the Mali. Why don't we talk about the things that Africa itself had its own time?
It was the food basket of the world. It was the knowledge center of the world. It had the oldest university in the world. Why don't you teach these things to the people? That the idea of degrees actually comes from Kemet. The idea, I have degrees personally, the idea of degrees comes from Kemet. Why don't you teach this damn history? Why? Because it inspires people. Because when you teach it to a young girl in Africa and tell them, look, we were not this way, we were this way. Our ancestors were thinkers, we are great men and women. We had queen warriors, we had queens that ruled Africa, queens, women that ruled empires in Africa, women that took Africa to war, women that defeated the imperialists at war, black women that went to war and defeated the armies from wherever they came from, women that led war. Why do you want to put an impression that Africa was always putting women down? Never. Queen Nziga, go and research about Queen Nziga, one of the examples. Now. So don't want to talk about the competitive advantage of Africa. How is Africa competitive? How do we use our competitive advantage as people in Africa? Remember, I told you that in economics, competitiveness means you look at what you do better than the rest of the world. I, Katum Kasa, I know my competitiveness. I'm a writer, I'm an author, I'm an orator, I speak. I know where my energy is. I know where my strength is. I have many other weaknesses. I'm so poor at IT. I'm so poor at uh, internet stuff, all these things other people have to have to wear head. But I know where my strength is. I'm a writer. When I pick pen, I write bit flare. And I can communicate. Now, that's what we call your competitive advantage. You must know your strength and you must know your weakness. Africa's strength lies where? I've been saying it in the last episodes. It lies in our soils. That's why we are called Kemet, the land of black soils, not blue soils, not yellow soils, not red soils. Our lands were black soils. And black soils means richness. The soils were richer. It means we have food from January to December. The question I'll be asking Africans, why are you hungry? When nature has blessed you with the best soils in the world, why are you hungry? Why do you beg fertilizers from Ukraine? Why do you beg food from Pakistan? Why do you buy rice from India? when we have all these fertile soils going for you. That's why you say we must fix ourselves until we understand where is the competitive advantage for Africa. Number one, our soils. What are they doing to destroy our soils? They are giving you chemicals. They are giving you fertilizers. And the fertilizers are killing away your organic soils. They are telling that everything to grow in Africa, you must fertilize it, you must spray it. That is nonsense, of course, if you ask me. Because when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, we were doing fine without those damn fertilizers. We are doing fine without those damn chemicals. Why do they come? The industry wants to make money. Now, until Africans go back to basic ways of doing farming, with the technology we have, the tractors are fine, but all these other chemicals, you have to rethink them. Our advantage number one is our soils. Do not kill African soils. I've been saying this, please avoid these companies. Companies such as Monsanto and the others, please avoid these companies. I know they cannot want to hear what I say, but I'm saying this for the sake of Mother Africa, our soils. You are going to learn how to avoid these companies. Now, our competitive advantage number one is on our soils. Number two, our youthful population. We have young people, 70% of people in Africa are below 35 years. Go Google it. 70% of people in Africa are below 35 years. Now ask yourself, the percentage of old people in Europe, ask yourself, the percentage of old people in Asia, you'll be surprised that Africa, as the youngest population. No, that is an advantage. When we have young people working, it's an advantage. 
Today, I want to talk about other things that I've been talking about. Remember, I've been talking about tourism. Today, I want to talk about new things. I want to talk about the movie industry. I want to talk about the culture industry. I want to show you that we are doing movies in Africa, but we are doing them the wrong way. When I look at movies from Uganda, I want to laugh, even when they are from Uganda, because they are full of hopelessness. They are full of mythology and superstition. They are full of a lot of trash comes from Ugandan movies. I will show you a photo of a movie where someone is showing us the original <laughs> Buganda spirits, the so-called gods that were fighting in the air, that people can jump up in the air, like the samurai, like you know, that kind of nonsense of depicting a movie. Which type of movie is that? Why well, you think that people have a magic, have power to go and fight in air? People jumping from the ground and fight up. You are copying everything from China. That is nonsense. That cannot take Africa from forward. Forward. China has their own methodology. They are so much into voodoo, so much into a lot of witchcraft, superstition, that someone can jump, someone can disappear. I grew up watching movies of the ninjas. Ninjas were stupid movies, very stupid movies, because no one actually can disappear. But that's what the Japanese were selling us, <laughs> that someone can actually disappear, then appear. And I was young. I was a music lover. I was a movie lover. As a child, my brain was forming. That's why I became so creative, because I watched these movies, I watched songs, I loved music, I loved the movies, I loved entertainment. But it helps a child to grow the mind. But if you're an adult and thinking that ninjas are real, then you must be having something wrong with your brain. My age, and you think ninjas are real? That people actually go and disappear? You are not different from someone who thinks that Jesus was born a virgin, from a virgin mother. We're not different from such a person. Now, the movies I see from Uganda do not help us to sell. That's why your movies are begun in Uganda and they die in Uganda. I tell you, I know you guys doing movies. Some of them are my students, actually. I will not mention here. But we're wasting time. Because your movies are copycats. You copy from Bollywood, India. You copy from Nollywood, Nigeria. You copy a bit of China, Japan. You copy a bit of Europe, you are lost. Ugandan movies are lost. There's nothing to show home about. Until you sit down and ask yourselves as Ugandan movie actors, what storyline can stay? What storyline can sell? What st storyline can cross over to the US? How come that a few movies from Uganda have crossed over? I've watched a few movies from Uganda right here in the UK, I've watched a few movies made in Uganda right here in the UK, and I can mention a few names. Why are those movies making it here? There are just few, about four movies I think I've seen here, made in Uganda, featured here. The movie of um, that girl playing chess, is one of the famous movies in Europe. That movie of a young girl born in Islam, and plays chess and wins the tournament and goes to Russia and becomes a star. That movie has been played over and over on TVs in the UK. That movie is a star movie from Uganda. Now, until you think you Ugandans and avoid copying hopeless movies from Nigeria, hopeless movies from Nigeria, which talk about nothing but voodoo, 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 witchcraft, superstition, to God be the glory, Useless movies from Nigeria, very useless. Same storyline, same storyline, very useless movies from Nigeria. The same story, love movies, repeated over and over for a decade. If you're not talking about love, which has no meaning, which has no end, they're talking about voodoo and witchcraft and how Jesus Christ is saving Africans in Nigeria. What a nonsense of portraying Africa that way. That for us, our gods are useless. That for us, our culture is useless. We must rely on Western culture. We must learn or we rely on a god imported to Africa, to Nigeria, to save us. They create movies where you see magic, where you see witchcraft. They promote witchcraft in their movies. Nigerian movies have been dooming Africa instead. They haven't even helped Africa, I should say. Nigerian movies are worse movies. 
they have given us the wrong impression of Africa. And I've been telling them, and I'm using this media to tell them, Nigerians, wake up and stand up. Your movies are useless for Africa. They have told our children that voodoo, that witchcraft is real. They have told our children that actual superstition is real, that actually someone can die out of witchcraft, that Jesus is the savior. Your movies are useless to Africa. Your movies have created a, a generation of Africans that don't think, that think that they must go and worship the certain God, that the, the Bible is the answer. Your movies have doomed Africa, you Nigerians. The same movies coming from Uganda. Many of them are very useless movies. And I stopped watching them about 10 years ago, those movies from Nigeria, or even more, because they were very useless movies, the same storyline. Why don't you talk about the culture of Nigeria, which is good, the able people? Why don't you put a film that depicts the beauty of Nigeria, the culture of Nigeria, the economy of Nigeria, the youth enterprising of Nigeria, the history of Nigeria, the wars fought by your ancestors, the resistance of Nigerians, the progress of Nigerians, the marketing of Nigerians. Again, that one of the most intelligent people we have from Africa. Good engineers, good mathematicians. Why don't you put a movie that markets Nigeria in a right way? In a right way. Than always showing Nigeria as full of witchcraft, as dying, as all this nonsense from Nigeria. Why do you depict Nigeria as the worst? Every time your movies are all about negativity from Nigeria. Until movie writers, script writers think again and think, what is it that we are missing in our education system? We have been miseducated. How would we use our movies to educate our people? That the Bible is a lie. That the Quran is a lie. Why do you fear to watch such movies? That the Quran and the Bible were forced on our people. Why don't you watch such movies? That our people had their own way of life. Why don't you write such movies and teach young people their write right history? Why? Because we want money. Why? Because we want excitement. Because that movie will not sell. You must excite people and you get rich quicker. You must excite people, give them whatever they want. But to what extent are you thinking about the future of your children, your children's children? The movie industry in Africa has potential. Why? Because we have the beautiful scenarios in the world. The beautiful scenarios in the world are found in Africa. I will say that without bias, without even care. We have the best scenarios. We can do movies. We have the best game parks, the best national parks. Everything beautiful is in Africa. Why don't you use our scenery to have the best movies that can rival with Hollywood? that can rival with Bollywood. We have the best climate in Africa. We can do the best movies. We have the best planes. If you want to uh, have a war movie, we have the best flatlands. We have the best hill places. We have the most strong men and women who can act. Why don't we turn that energy, the youthful people in Africa, you turn them into actors? Movie is number one. I'm talking about today. Number two is the sports. We are talented as people in Africa with the ability to respond to creativity. Nature has given us creativity because we have 12 months of life. No snow, no winter. We have a lot of time to be active in Africa. That's why our population actually goes up because we have free time. We have a lot of time to be so energetic and active. We have the best boxers in the world. The box, best boxers in the world. The, box, the best marathon runners. The best sprinting people. The best storytellers. The best swimmers. Name it. Look what sports we are there. The best footballers, per excellence, per individuals. Most of these creative guys on the field of soccer, on the field of football, are from Africa. 
or have ancestry from Africa the way it is today? Why don't we have soccer academies in Africa? Why don't we have music academies in Africa? I began one in Uganda until when I was in display. I had started a music academy in Uganda, and I want to begin that again. A music academy in Uganda, which I began with my company. We need to have more music academies where people simply go and learn instruments and learn how to be the best musician they can be, an all-round musician, because music is art and music is wealth. The best music schools, the best football academies, the best boxing academies, the best uh, marathon uh, sprinting academies. We need to have these academies in Africa. You ask me, what do we do? I'm telling you what we can do. Before you say there's no jobs, there are no jobs, you are going to, you're going to create these jobs. Young people want jobs and they have the energy. Start a gym, start a music academy, start a sports academy. Because young people have the energy and they're going to come, they're going to embrace your academy, you're going to earn money as we empower them. How about that? You earn money, you become rich, at the same time, you are helping your people. Think, let us think outside and within the box as people in Africa. How do we use them people? They have the talent. Start academies. Join together. Pull companies together. You have one million. This one has half a million. This one has a quarter million. Pull resources together. Let us learn to work as a team. We can't have the capital. Let us have people we can ally with partners in Europe, partners in the US, we can ally with and have these academies going for us in Africa. You ask me for a solution, I'm giving you a solution for unemployment. Number one, utilize the youth. The youth want music, start a music academy. The youth want football, start a football academy. At a small level, at a village level, start that academy. Don't ask me what else you can do. Start a boxing academy. Start a swimming academy. Start an athletic academy for runners. Start these academies because young people are available. Take them off drugs. Take them to boxing. Take them to swimming. Take them to singing. Start these academies in Africa. This is where our competitive advantage is. Ronaldo is paid money. I will simply dream about all my life. But one man earns it. Boxers earn millions in one night. Not all of us are going to become boxers, but I'm showing you that sports pays. Sports pays. If our governments were smart enough, they would invest more into sports, more into harnessing the talents of these children. Today, if my children ask me, what do you want to be? I will never tell them to become lawyers because I've been one. And I've seen how it can be so frustrating. I will tell them to find their talents and do whatever they want to do. If you want to be a musician, go, go for it. If you want to be a dancer, go for it. If you want to be a boxer, go for it. If you want to be a marathon runner, go for it. If you want to be an IT expert, internet, computing, all that, go for it. I will tell these children to go for whatever skill they can master because that's where life is. Professionals where there's no life, I will tell them, don't bother. Professionals without life, professionals without life, I will tell them, don't bother. You only go there at your own risk. I will not tell them to go, go and become lawyers, no. Unless someone has a passion I had for it. So it has to teach our students, to teach our children to think, where does the market lie? The market lie in the food industry. Teach them to love agriculture. Teach them to love their soils. We grew up knowing that we must go to school, have degrees, and go to offices. I have three degrees. But sometimes we wonder how useful these degrees are. Because we are taught to go and have these many degrees. Teach students, teach children to love their land, not to sell their land, to love agriculture, to become farmers. 
intensive farmers, specialized farmers. That's what the money is. The money is right in our soils in Africa. Teach young people to love farming. Teach young people to love to use their hands, to love to be practical. Teach them to love IT, to love computer, to love technology. Then let us go through the photos I've prepared for today as they will supplement what I've been talking about. Competitive advantage for Africa. What can we do? Yeah. Give me a minute on that photo. Oh, a second. On the left is a woman who works in a quarry. She smashes those rocks to earn a living. She's dirty. She's tired. She may be in her late 60s. But what does she earn a day? She earns about $2 a day. And after five years, she is dead. On the contrary, on the left, our ancestors were the one guiding us to become the people we became. I became the person I became because of my grandfathers. Two of them have been talking about them. Sadly, my grandmother had died by the time I grew up, but my grandfathers had stayed. I always said that I give credit to my grandfathers because they molded me. Now, if our mothers, our grandmothers are going to be like this, Africa is doomed. We must quit an avenue to support our grandmothers. Then, next photo. I love this. I've ordered a t shirt, which is going to be like this. Very soon, I'm going to be seeing it. This is called the African Ankh. When you read the Kemet history or the history of Africa, you will see that Ankh. The Ankh is a symbol of life in Africa. It is a symbol of a woman. A woman is warm on the right. It is a symbol of the ovaries of a woman. The one you see as a cross, the Fiopian tube. And it's the symbol of the man's manhood. That one symbol symbolized life in the Kemetic Africa, in the ancient Africa, the Africa of antiquity. That symbol, it is from that symbol that they got their own crosses today. Where did they get that symbol? It was from Africa. Because in Africa, we thought that a man and a woman unite to create life. That was our ancient Africa. The womb gives us life inside. On your life, left, you see a baby there. And the ovaries of a woman meeting with the organ of a man, and then there is that birth canal. And then life starts. That diagram tells you a summary of how Africa, how Kemet valued life. Can you have these t-shirts and teach our children to wear them, to love them? Because this is us. This is life. We don't want your crosses from your Jesus. We don't want your crosses from our Jesus. They are useless to us. We want our ankh. And I'm going to be wearing a t-shirt with an ankh. Then it's continue. Then let's continue, please. Africa is one. We are Caucasians. We are Asians. We are Black. We are people from all around. Remember, everyone began life from Africa. We are Caucasians. We are Asians. We are Africans. Now, these people go to Africa to do projects. And I'm happy to see them united doing projects in Africa. Then let us continue, please. Africa is one. That's the symbol. Africa is one. Whether you are black, yellow, orange, or blue, there are no white people, by the way. I always tell you this. Let them stop telling you that they are white people. They are no white people. Look at them. They are not white. So let them not tell you a lie. So orange, pink, yellow, brown, dark black, all of us are one people. Then let's continue. <clears throat> yeah, you see these girls from Sudan. They are dancers. I loved watching their documentary. That's why I took the photo there. They are dancers. I'm talking about culture that can earn us money. Black Dinka girls from Sudan. Very, very uh, beautiful color there. I love Ethiopia. I was in Ethiopia and sad, luckily, 
Actually, I took that coffee in their small, small cups. That is the therapy. I was there. I tested their tea and their food, I think it's called uh, Ankara, something like that. Then go ahead. Traditional dress code of Diop, Krobo of Ghana. I love that kind of dress. We need to tell our children to love their culture. Now look at what is happening in Africa, the miseducation of the African children. Look at the children in China. They are learning IT, they are learning coding, they are learning computing. Look at the children in Africa. <laughs> they are learning to become pastors and nuns and priests. What is the role of a priest in Africa today? What is the role of a father, a reverend father in Africa today? And a pastor in Africa today? A imam in Africa today? What is their role? Miseducation of the African child. We tell our children to become pastors, to become priests. Africa has a movie industry. And when you see some of these movies, I took this uh, uh, photo from a guy about movies in Egypt. They are showcasing what they have. They are showcasing the pyramids in these movies. Let us go ahead and see the photos now. Now you can see the nonsense from Nigeria. I always call it the nonsense from Nigeria. This is their kind of movies. I don't like their movies at all. And I wish people can, can decampaign movies from Nigeria. I wish people can decampaign these hopeless movies from Nigeria. Now, what are they doing? Look at that photo. Then let us go back to the photo of the movie in Nigeria. Because those movies really make me annoyed. What they do, I hate those movies. You see, they demonize their own culture. What they promote is blood, killing, sacrifices. Those guys from Nigeria have created child sacrifice in Africa without them knowing. And the person had the third eye. You look at how stupid they are in their movies. Big men and big women, because they want to get money. They portray very hopeless image about Africa. That for us, we are about voodoo, we are about witchcraft. We are about... Those guys there, I don't even quote them at all. They have done a lot of harm to Africa through their stupid, hopeless movies. We have to decampaign movies from Nigeria and all these hopeless movies all over Africa that promote Africa in a bad light. Witchcraft, gods, sorcery, superstition. We must decampaign these movies until when they shape up and begin showing us movies that build Africa, we must decampaign these hopeless movies from Nigeria. Then go ahead. Look at the beauty of Africa. I've taken these photos across Africa. Look at the train system. Look at the cities of Africa. Humble. You can shoot a movie along the train in Africa. You can shoot a movie in the cities of Africa. I'm showing you where do you go and shoot movies. Movies that can sell. Movies that can compete with the rest of the world. Africa has the best scenarios. Let us continue, please. Look at the stupid movies from Nollywood. They set the pace of showing movies, and then they gave us nonsense. Nigerian movies are about witchcraft, about superstition, about praising Jesus Christ. They are the most hopeless movies we ever watch. Do not watch these movies from Nigeria. Please, do not watch these movies. They are dangerous to your children. Now, look at such a movie. Now, this movie on the left is from Uganda. Now look at how hopeless these Ugandan actors are. Look at how hopeless these Ugandan actors are. And they want me to stand here and market it. Look, they are quoting an impression that actually we have witchcraft in, in Uganda, but someone can fight up in space as if they are, what, birds or what? Now this is the nonsense I'm talking about Ugandan movies, very hopeless movies. Until they shape up to show us something good, we shall not market your movies. You have to give us a meaning why we market your movies. These movies put us down. We cannot market them. Then let's go ahead. Look at hopeless movies from Nigeria. And I've been telling them, give us a better storyline. Story, stop demonizing evil traditions. This is what the newspaper says. Because their movies always go ahead and talk about bad things about Africa. 
Why? They want to make money. They want to show a bad image. Start giving us a better storyline about Africa. We shall not watch your movies. We shall not support your damn movies from Africa until when we show us something better. Like this comic movie. This was a good one. I watched recently a movie about a community barrister uh, from Norwood. This is a good movie, by the way. One of the best movies I think I've seen from Nigeria. Community movie, no witchcraft in it, just a satire with a lawyer who works with the community. Show such storylines. Nigeria, you can do better than showing us voodoo and witchcraft and child sacrifice. Stop showing us your nonsense. Show us something good. This is one of the best movies we can show about Africa. See, from Africa, what we were never taught in school, African samurai, samurai warriors. There was an Africa who went to Japan and actually literally conquered. It was the best fighter in Japan. You know? Why don't you show you some of these good movies, some of the good stories about Africa? Why do you show Africa as a decaying continent in your damn movies? Start showing us something good about Africa. This is a good African movie, bigger than Africa. It's a good African documentary I would recommend. Show expeditions from Africa. Africa was trading with the rest of Europe. Africa was trading with the rest of uh, Asia. The first ex expedition to come from Africa went to the new world, which you call USA. The first people to go there were people from Africa. Show that story. The first people to settle in the USA of today, the new world, were people from Africa. They had gone there before. Show that story, how Africans went to the US before even the so-called Columbus discovered it. Talk about the history of the Moors and their achievement in Europe, how they took bathing system in Europe, how they took street lights in Europe, how they made roads in Europe, how they took agriculture, modern agriculture in Europe. It came from the Moors. Talk about such history. Show it in the movies. Show good movies about Africa. Talk about Greek Africa. Talk about Greek Africa. Talk about uh, Cleopatra. Then show more photos. I want to be in time. I want to be in time now. Let us rush it. Let us rush, rush the photos. I want to beat the time. Show photos about um, Cleopatra. Cleopatra was never an African. Do not tell a lie. Cleopatra was not a black woman. Cleopatra was a Greek Macedonian who was born in Africa. Look at that image of Africa, a very, very beautiful image of Africa. We live in our humble villages, green everywhere, fertile soils, good people, happy people, warm people. We are naturally a warm people. Look at this young boy, the entrepreneur. Be entrepreneurs. Young boy, very smart, sells eggs. I want my sons to do this. I want my daughters to do this. We can do anything possible to earn a living in a good way. Africa has the food, has the food, the organic foods, the flowers. Let us market this as products from Africa. Let us market the good things out of Africa. Look at Mogadishu today, a beautiful city called Mogadishu. They will tell you, oh, there is a war in Somalia. There is no war in Somalia. Somalia is now peaceful. Somalia has one of the beautiful cities, Mogadishu. Do not market Somalia as the war torn country. Stop selling Somalia in a negative way because you want to earn money. Look at what they told us. Movies should showcase such brainwashing of, brainwashing of our children that our gods were bad and their gods were right. Their gods is on a cross, our god is on a tree. What was the difference? But they said that our gods were bad and their gods were right. Brainwashing. Show this. Tell them a story of Jesus, how Jesus is a fake Jesus. Tell them how Jesus was the son of uh, uh, Caesar, Caesar Bogia. Caesar Bogia became the Jesus Christ. Tell them how Jesus Christ was the son of a ruler and how this ruler got his son to put him as the image. The first image of Jesus Christ is a man called Caesar Bogia. This is the Roman Empire, <coughs> creations. Jesus Christ is the question of the Roman Empire. <clears throat> Talk about sports. I like this Ugandan lady. <clears throat> She's called Kathleen Noble. A Ugandan lady who has been doing bowling, who has been uh, doing that kind of game, a uh, little uh, game on, uh, and she has been winning medals. 
She's a Ugandan. She's Caucasian. She's a Ugandan. She's called Catherine Noble. We love her. Uganda has all these people. We are black. We are Caucasians. We are Asians. All of us are Ugandans. Catherine Noble, Caucasian Ugandan, has been really winning for us in Uganda. And this is our team in Uganda. We have the best team in netball. The best team in netball. Yeah, that's Uganda. My country. And of course, we have been having the best runners all over. So when I talk about sports, let us support sports. That's the best team in Uganda. Our, our beautiful team of ladies who know how to do uh, netball. Go and look at the statistics and see where we are as Uganda. Today, I'm talking about my country, Uganda. We have the best netball team Africa has ever seen. And you see, we love football. On your right is a Nigerian <laughs> football lady who played in the World Cup and scored. On the left is a, a lady referee squaring it down with the Ugandan sports <laughs> footballer. We love football. We love football. We love football. Therefore, start soccer academies. Start soccer academies, you people in Africa. That's where money is. Start soccer academies. Look at our guys winning. Kipirangati, this guy has been winning for us medals. Almost all medals we have been winning. Worldwide, we have been winning medals. These are Ugandans running and winning. Simple Google it, you see. And this is Joshua winning medals. We have been winning medals. Chapter Gay, we have been winning medals. So when I talk about sports academies, uh, uh, running academies, uh, athletics academies, this is what I'm talking about. Start them. Make young people in Africa busy in academies, in sports academies. We love soccer. We are mad with soccer. We play in the mud. We even strip naked because we love soccer. We love football. We love sports. Therefore, help young people to learn sports. The art of sharing. In Africa, we eat together. We are a communal society. We eat together. We share. We are not selfish. We are a sharing community. This must continue to define us. People in Africa share. We are not selfish. We share the little we have. This is it. This is our competitive advantage as Africans. Agriculture, sports, soils, our young population. This is us. We need to market Africa in the best way possible. We must start telling Africa in the best way possible. We must start telling our story. We must stop Nollywood of Nigeria to spoil our image. We must stop Ugandan movies from spoiling our image. We must set our image clear. We must talk about the lies they told us. We must show our cities like Mogadishu and say Mogadishu is not a war-torn city. Mogadishu has life. I have hobbies I went to law school with a teaching law in Mogadishu. Ugandan is teaching law in Mogadishu. Ugandan is working in Mogadishu. I know them. Let us talk about the good things about Africa. Why do we talk about war and war and war every time? Somalia is not at war as they depicted. There's life in Somalia. Mogadishu is there's life in Mogadishu. So all in all I'm saying today is that until we accept that people are defining us and we start defining ourselves, we shall not move Africa forward. To move Africa forward, we must start defining ourselves. Do not allow them to define you. Let us define ourselves. Let us redefine ourselves. And whoever is defining us wrongly, let us point them out. For example, Nollywood. Nigerian fake movies have defined Africa for the last 20 years wrongly. Nigerian fake movies of Nollywood have defined Africa in a bad way. They tell everyone in the world that for us, we're about witchcraft. We're about superstition. That Jesus Christ is the only savior for Africa. Never stop marketing Africa the long way, you guys in Nigeria. If you believe in your Voodoo and witchcraft and nonsense, not all of us believe in it. The same goes to the Ugandan movies. We must stop this nonsense from Nigeria to market Africa the long way. But Africans have law horns, they are witch wizards, they are sorcerers, they are man eaters, they are blood suckers, they are vampires. 
those hopeless movies they go and parade and market Africa in a bad way. Then it's back to me. The only way we can market Africa is by showing the good Africa. Yet the good is there. Why do we dwell so much on the lies of Africa when the facts are more? We have a sack of facts and a cup of lies. A cup of lies versus a sack of facts. Why do you go with a cup of lies and leave a sack of facts, a forest of facts and a desert of lies? Why do you dwell on the desert of lies and leave a forest of facts? Let us go for the forest of facts. Africa is not dying. Africa is not poor. Africa has a, a good population. Africa has creative people. Africa has the best soils in the world. Africa has the best environment in the world. Let us market Africa the best way. This is why you create this TV with my friends, because we are tired of a narration that depicts Africa as under. We must reclaim our position, and we must tell Africa the right way. Thank you so much, Dennis, for a good show. Thank you so much, viewers, for watching me. Please do subscribe. Dennis, please show us the uh, email again. For those who want to be interviewed, for those who want to be uh, here on the shows, please write to us directly. You must TV Africa at proton.me. You must TV Africa at proton.me. Please write to us, and Dennis is going to uh, respond to you. They are going to give you time for the program. They are going to market your products. We are going to market your work. We are going to market your work. We intend to open up studios in Rwanda. We intend to open up studios in South Africa, uh, in um, Benin. Of course, um, in Somalia, we have contacts there now, in Ethiopia, and of course, in Burundi and many other countries. Of course, Tanzania is on our number one list of opening up a studio there. We are coming for you. We are coming for more studios. We are opening up more studios in Africa. We shall be doing street interviews shortly. Keep it Human TV Africa. Keep it live. Keep it positive. And keep watching Human TV Africa. My name is Katomi Kasta. I sign out.